in this type of fishing weather, but this is just, this is fantastic. You know, Chuck, a lot of folks don't think, you know, don't give speckled trout a lot of credit on a fly pole, but you look at this bend in this pole this morning and the way this fish is tussling with me. A little six, seven, eight weight, and it's, uh, it's tough to beat. And we're back in here out of the wind. Exactly. He is shaking his head, buddy. That is a gorgeous purple fish. Let's see. Grady White Boat's reputation for designing ruggedly elegant fishing boats is legendary. Our attention to quality, detail, and customer service is unmatched. From our Fisherman 180 and Coastal Explorer series to the unrivaled Canyon 456, you'll find no boat that rides better and offers more fishing amenities. Go ahead, experience fishing at its best. Get the Grady. Hello and welcome to the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Well, today's program is one of my favorites. It's fly rods and it's speckled trout. Oh yeah, this is the first time we've ever done uh, a show with speckled trout using fly rods. And I was excited about it. We're fishing with a new captain that's worked with us, uh, Captain Gary Dubiel uh, out of Oriental. Uh, well known in that area, one of the top guides in that area and, and uh, loves to catch speckled trout on a fly rod. And so we uh, decided to do it. We actually did it in November. and. Uh, uh, just had a great morning uh, right around the Oriental, uh, and he was fishing with our friend Chuck Lautridge from uh, Harker's Island. Chuck just recently moved to Harker's Island, uh, who loves to fly fish also. But we caught a lot of fish and, and a couple of nice ones. Joe, in gear time, we'll talk about the equipment. It's really not high tech. It's just the art of that fly rod. That's right. You need, you need to know how to work a fly rod. That's 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 a, the most important aspect of fly fishing, and, uh, and and know where the fish are. Gary spends a lot of time on the water around there, so he knew where speckled trout were hanging out, and. Um, uh, he, he, he provided them that morning. And the fun continues because Donna's got a recipe for a grouper today. Real special grouper recipe. If you like that offshore fi fish that we have off our coast, uh, you know, grouper prepared anyway is a good fish, but she's got a really good recipe for us today. Well, we got a lot going on, so let's go fishing here on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. We're going to give them a try this morning on the fly rod. You say you got them stacked up in here pretty good? Yeah, they, they've been in here great, Chuck. I mean, there's, there's a lot of fish. This time of the year, the fish are moving up in the creeks getting up in these shallow spots, taking advantage of that dark bottom. They get all ganged up and they get awful hungry and they're perfect for the fly rod. Good, good. Well, I've, we've got several, several on the boat, so we're ready to go, man. So we'll, we'll start catching some, see what we can do. Because there ought to be some nice ones in here this time of year. Oh, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, Gary, there's number one, I think, buddy. Excellent. Pretty work, Chuck. See what we can do. He feels like he's pretty decent fish. I don't think it's a drum. Oh, that's a nice, that's a very that's nice trout. That's a nice trout right there, buddy. Yes, I'm gonna step is. down and let you put your hands on that one. You little got head it. head shaker. Little head shaker. Oh, nice buddy. Nice run there. Hold on. Hold on, partner. Hold on, there we go. It's a nice way to start out the morning, Chuck. I can't fuss about that at all, man. I can't fuss about it at all. That's a nice one this morning. Yes, sir. He's he, he not ready to come to the boat. I got him here too fast. Oh, me. He is awful sparked up here. He is ready. He just didn't know he was whipped. Try not to get him to come unglued here at the boat. Well, trying to release these fish is so nice not to put them in a net. We can just, we, we can grab them and, and if it gets off right there, we're fine. But that's a nice speckled trout, buddy. Yeah. Gary, the spots on that one weigh about a pound and a half. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I told that's you a while ago that I had that little tip in there on that fly, and then I cast back in there, and he just he swallowed that little white and gold fly. So. Yes, he did. That's that's perfect fish there. That's a that's a beautiful sized fish and outstanding on the fly rod. That's what you've been catching over here off the noose for a couple of weeks now. It sure has. I mean, the, the bite's been on, the fishing's been great, and, and certainly this is fantastic on the fly rod. Well, like I say, barbless hooks, that ought to come right out. We'll get him back in the water, and uh, no telling what he'll be like next year if the winter doesn't get him. That's the truth there. They will hit that fly rod, though. Yeah, he looked like he stopped that pretty good. Let's put him let back. him go hold that fly up. That's, that is, that's one of your flies, I think. That's uh, that white and kind of tan with the gold flash. Sure enough. Sure enough, let's go ahead and put him back in the, look at there, took right off. 
Good enough. Outstanding work, Chuck. Thank you, sir. Let's get another one. Gary, we're working uh, clouds or minnows, and uh, you've got like almost a little deceiver variation this morning, not quite as much weight, but we're fishing this. I've got a, a, a clear intermediate sink tip line. I think you're fishing a pure, just straight intermediate, are you not? That's correct, Chuck. Yeah, sure enough. So we're not really sinking down deep, but the, the intermediate sinks about an inch and a half or inch or so per second. So what it does is allow the fly to, to get down close to the bottom, which is where most of those trout are going to be feeding. And uh, we can get the, get the fly in front of them on this 53, 54, 55 degree water. I think they'll bite like they have this morning. Yeah, that's the, the real key is, is to get the fly down. And, and uh, you know, it, the intermediate lines work out great. Uh, if you are fishing a floating line, you want to put a little extra leader on there and a little bit heavier fly and to slow that down a bit. But certainly these intermediates give you the opportunity to keep that fly right in their nose. Yep, don't doubt that. All there right, we go, Chuck. Gary. Feels like another good one. Okay, buddy. I'm going to drop that down and keep us right here. We'll work this spot over pretty good. That's exactly what we're looking for there, buddy. That's a nice chunk. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. He'd be like mine now. I'm not sure he's quite ready for me, but we'll see. He's uh, still a little sparky, still a little green here. He is definitely, that's a nice fish, Gary. That's the three, that's three plus for sure. Oh, absolutely. She's that may be four. Getting, getting awful close to that four mark there. All right, buddy, you take your time. That is a gorgeous speckled trout on the fly, on any tackle, but much, I mean, the fly rod is just outstanding. Water yeah. temperature about 53, 54 this morning, cloudy and overcast, feels almost like duck hunting instead of fishing weather, but this is just, this is fantastic. You know, Chuck, a lot of folks don't think, you know, don't give a speckled trout a lot of credit on a fly pole, but you look at this bend in this pole this morning and the way this fish is tussling with me. Little six, seven, eight weight, and it's uh, it's tough to beat. And we're back in here out of the wind. Exactly. He is shaking his head, buddy. That is a gorgeous purple fish. Let's see. Give me a little slack there, Chuck. I don't think that fly is coming up anytime soon. It looked like looked like she took that down pretty pretty well. She ate. She ate. I can get right in there. All right, Fabulous Captain fish. Gary. Is that something or what, buddy? Yeah. Gary, she just inhaled that fly, so it is, it's absolutely amazing what a, a fish that size can do on the fly rod. Yeah, it sure is. That's beautiful. That, beautiful. That is a wonderful fish there. But if the sun comes up, that water temperature might warm up, what, maybe another couple of degrees, you think? Yeah, back here in these creeks with the, this real dark bottom, you can get three, four degrees on some days, and um, you know it's it, it really can spark up the bite quite a bit. I mean, sunshine is not your enemy this time of the year. Yeah, pretty well. He, he wants to stay up on top. One of them head shakers. I'm on there the he way, goes. Captain. Taking off, getting me underneath the boat now. Looks like another quality fish, Chuck. All right, Captain Gary. You're going to have me changing flies, buddy. Pretty, pretty, pretty fish. They're amazing in this clear water. You can see I can every see purple spot. all the way from up here. <laughs> That's just outstanding. Nice little fish. Bring him in there. Like I said, not a giant, but an awful nice quality fish there. Definitely hit that fly. You say you hit it really subtle, huh? Yeah, it was a subtle bite. It's a little little overcast and cool this morning. Sometimes they're a little bit more subtle in that kind of weather, but well, that certainly one is, was willing enough. That one is gone, none the worse for wear. Outstanding. We'll do another one, buddy. Yes, sir. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. There we go, Chuck. All right, Gary. Got one. Wants to take some line out the reel. That's another pig, buddy. Stay on him. Stay on him and take your time. Oh, gosh. Nice, nice trout, Gary. They sure tugging like a good one. That is a nice, nice speck, partner. Pretty, pretty, pretty. 
Still pretty subtle on the take though, just sucking that little fly in. Yep, just sucking it in, not much there. Just felt a little bit of resistance and set the hook and there he was. Fantastic, I'm gonna slide that, slide that pole down. We'll sit right here and see if he's got a brother somewhere. There you go. Oh yeah. Okay, okay, pretty, pretty, pretty. I can see the purple from here, my man. He does not think much of this boat. He does not. All right, man. We are close. Right up here we are now. close. We are close. <laughs> Outstanding. Not a bad trout, my friend. Not at all. That little fly pops right out. Barbless. Let's see that up here just a second. Got it a little tangled up, but that's that is, all right. He sucked that little fly in, just, just kind of sucked it right up. It just it didn't take much to get him in there, but that is uh, it's a nice little speckled trout, buddy. Yes, it is. Settle for them any day, Chuck. We'll take those on spinning gear or the fly rod, but they're Absolutely. especially nice on the fly rod. That they are. Go home, big boy. Tell your mama I miss her. Gary, we pretty much lost our uh, cloud covering. The wind certainly has picked up with that front, but uh, with the sun coming out, it should be warming these back back of these creeks up maybe one or two degrees. So that should help us pretty much. Uh, yeah, I think I really think that that sunshine will, will definitely help us out here this afternoon, Chuck. And you know, a, a lot of times, a few degrees can make an awful big difference on these fish. The the wind certainly is is a little bit more more brisk than it was this morning. Well, it's definitely kind of. out of the northwest. That front's definitely come through, so we've got to we've got to get back into creeks and get out of the wind as much as we can to, to fly fish. But uh, we'll pick up some fish on these little, almost no weight on these flies. So these fish are really just sucking that fly in. So if we get back in here, the water temperature warms up maybe three degrees. We ought to see a, a pretty marked improvement on what we can catch. Oh, I think so, and I think the. The bite will spark up a little bit too. You won't have to wonder if that's anything on the end of there. Oh, right. fish on, Gary. Excellent, Chuck. Excellent. We, just, we were just talking about the sun coming out and there's a little fish just sucked that fly in. All right. Oh, he's, he seems to be growing some now. <laughs> I'd say for a little fish, he opened up an awful big hole out there. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. He was coming toward me for a little while, but I think we're gonna, I think we'll be happy with this guy. Oh, nice little splash. Like I say, any fish that will eat a fly is a very, very nice fish. That's a oh, mighty nice respectable little, fish there. Nice mighty little fish. Oh, buddy. That fly in his mouth, he is still not real happy with the program yet. It's all yours, Captain. All right. I'll consider him caught. Look all right. That's a mighty respectful trout there, Chuck. I'll take this kind of fish on the fly rod any day of the week, buddy. He just he just sucked that little fly in. I mean, you just felt the, the fly just stop, basically get kind of mushy, and they're just they're just sucking it in. They're not really hammering it because the water's still still chilly, 53 degrees or so. But the sun's come out, so it's uh, it's no doubt. I think the fish are kind of perking up a little bit. But it's uh, barbless hook. We'll come right out of there. That fish will go right back, and, and my golly, make somebody real happy. Making me real happy. <laughs> All right, once Thank again, you, wonderful. Thank you, Cap. Let's catch another one. Oh, Gary, this is a nice fish, Gary. It looks like it. Oh my, I got a Pretty pig. Work. Pretty work. Got a pig on the fly. Sit right here with that power pole down. Oh my. Yes, sir. Stay still, stay on there, babe. Nice trout. Oh, mm -mm -mm. he's not happy about this cold morning. He is not. Look at the purple on that fish. Come mm. on now, come on now. All we want to do is touch and let you get back in that cold water. Don't get back in that pole, don't get back in the motor. Oh my, Captain, Captain, Captain. Look at here, look at here. Isn't that pretty? That is, it is just absolutely incredible. That's as pretty a sight as you'll see on the end of a fly pole, I'll tell you that. That's just 
a beautiful spit. Jack, you couldn't ask for a prettier hook set. Look, you got him right, right here in the corner <laughs> of the mouth. I'm not sure he probably didn't do that all on his own. All I did was hold on to this end of the fly rod, but another gorgeous fly rod speckled trout, buddy. It That's sure nice is. on any kind of rod. Yes, it is. Beautiful fish, a lot of shoulders to her. Get her back in the water. Let her grow up another year. Fantastic. This is about a four pound fish. Oh my. This is oh a my. nice, nice fish. I tell you, I caught a lot of fish on the fly, Chuck, but something about a big speckled trout on a fly pole that's just, just awful special. Well, this is, this one's not quite caught yet, but he's getting close. Gosh, look how pretty he is. So chunky, Gary. He's big as your forearm almost. Mm. Maybe one more pass. I just, I swear I hate for him to get off. That's what you're looking for right well, that's there. That's just fabulous. Right there. Let's see if I can get the pliers and get this hook out, Cap. There we oh, go. She beautiful. popped right out. Is that a gorgeous fish or what? Fabulous. Look nice set of shoulders on that fish. Mm. They are thick. They are thick. Big old yellow mouth on him. Take off. Joe, we didn't catch a lot of fish, but we caught some good fish. Good class of fish. And that time of year, th this is a continuation of, of the spectacular, that's all you can call it, speckled trout fishing we've, we've been experiencing on our coast for the last two or three years. And it's going to continue to get better. We, we haven't had any harsh winters. Uh, this past winter was five years and uh, a lot of big fish in the fishery. And, and uh, Gary, Gary knows that area real well. He, he guides for not only speckled trout, which is probably his favorite, but uh, red drum. Uh, flounder, um, anything that you can catch in the mouth of the Noose River, that's pretty much his home base. But um, we, we, we had a lot of fun, and uh, there was one particular shoreline that we were working, and we'd go back to all, you know, back and forth, and uh, the fish were just working that shoreline and uh, had a good morning. Well, let's find out more about the equipment we use. Let's go to gear time. We came up today with, I think you've got some, some eight weights, seven weights, even a six weight would have worked back in here, but um, you're using intermediate lines. What do you use back here most likely, I mean most of the time for your, for your fishing back in here? Well, an intermediate line will work really well. Intermediate like you're using uh, tip on a line, floating line, uh, works real well. You can get away with a floating line, uh, but sometimes, like today, we experienced some fishing uh, conditions that, you know, it would have been a little bit tougher to feel that bite. But anything really, a, a guy with a bass outfit could come down here basically and maybe use the same line and certainly the same outfit, but that, with just changing his line, he'd be in, in pretty good shape. Oh, absolutely. Good, good. Well, the flies we used today were a, a mixture of some, uh, some clousers and some flies that you tie that don't sink quite as fast, but uh, show us what we used today. Well, we had a, a selection of clouser minnows, and clouser minnow, of course, one of the most popular saltwater flies that there are. But, you know, we used uh, some lighter flies, this tan and white today, and uh, a little bit more natural looking fly uh, because the water's been fairly clear. Of course, old standby for me, uh, speckled trout fishing is green and white, and green's awful popular uh, trout color. Um, but a fly that really produced well for us today, a, a fly pattern of my own, which is a, a fit, uh, it's called a little Hayden bait fish imitation. It's got just a little bit of weight in it, fish is more suspended. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, soft uh, hair to it, synthetic fibers, undulates well in the water and uh, you know the fish seem to uh, go for it on the, on the days when the, the bite may not be quite as hard. Well great man, this is, uh, like I said, this has already made my Christmas uh, coming down and catching these speckled trout on the fly rod. So we look forward to getting back down here with you, but had a great trip man. Great, thank you. Well, we hope you can use those tips if you plan on fly fishing for speckled trout. Now, let's catch up with Donna. She's got a recipe using grouper here on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Today in the kitchen we're making grouper with a roasted pepper salad. Goes together quick and easy and your friends will be so impressed. We're going to go ahead and start out. I have my grouper that has already been cleaned and cut into serving sizes. We're going to take our bag and our breader and we're going to place our breader into our bag. We're just going to pour that in. Goes in 
really quick. And in your box, you're going to get two bags and two um, bags of butter. So we're going to take our grouper, we're going to place that in, and then we're just going to give this a toss just to coat it well. We're going to place this on a piece of foil that is nonstick foil. Place that in our oven at about 425 degrees for about five to six minutes. It won't take long at all. Um, depending on the thickness of your fish, you, um, it may take just a little bit longer. But remember, it will continue to cook just slightly after you bring it out. So we're just going to place it onto our foil. You can see that gives it a nice coating. It's going to be really nice and crunchy on the outside, but nice and tender on the inside, which is what we're looking for. So we're going to pop that in the oven at 325 for about six to seven minutes. Meanwhile, we're going to make our salad. And I have some onions that I have sauté, um, cut up really thin. And we're going to pop those into our skillet. Then we're going to toss in some mushrooms. And if you don't like mushrooms, you can leave those out. It's just, we like them and they add a little bit of body to it. We're just going to saute that until your onions start to caramelize and your mushrooms will begin to kind of sweat a little bit. But we're kind of pushed on time, so we're going to go ahead and continue on with our recipe. We're going to also add in some garlic. And you can use fresh garlic that you cut yourself or, you know, I like to do mine easily, so I always keep some in the jar on hand. And it's starting to smell really nice in here. The combination of the onions and the mushrooms and the garlic is really nice. Then we're going to add in some roasted um, red peppers. Now you can buy these in a jar and just kind of drain them. Or if you want, you can roast your own at home where you um, put it over the fire, and then put it in a paper bag, peel off the skins, and slice them. Um, but I find it easier just to buy them in a jar for what I like to do. So we're just going to toss those all together. Then we're going to add in a little bit of um, red pepper flakes, a little bit of ground cumin, just a pinch of some coriander, and some capers. And just going to put those in there. And a little bit of some sherry vinegar. Whoop. And then we're just going to let that cook until everything is soft and tender and kind of thickened a little bit. See how pretty that is? And it has a great flavor and a great scent to it as well. Makes your house smell really good. And by the time your salad is done, your fish has come out of the oven and you're ready to serve your dinner. As you can see, this is what it looks like. I just kind of decorated my plate. I um, put my grouper down, then I um, poured my salad on the top and just kind of sprinkled it with some red pepper flakes. Just to give it a little bit of a a flare, maybe like you're serving it from a restaurant. So I hope you enjoyed the grouper with the red pepper salad, and I look forward to seeing you here next time on Simple Cooking. Thanks, Donna, for that recipe. Joe, let's go back. Those fellas really know how to use fly rod. They do. Both of them are very accomplished fly fishermen. Uh, Chuck loves it. Uh, Gary does it every day. And and uh, and you know, the, we didn't catch a lot of fish that morning, but the, the quality of the fish was indicative of what we're seeing throughout the whole fishery now with uh, speckled trout. We haven't had any severe winters, like we said earlier, uh, in five years. And, and so the, the size of the fish are up. But if you've never caught a speckled trout on a fly rod, give Gary a call. He's, um, I, I consider him one of the top fly fishing guides we've got in the entire state, and particularly in that Oriental area. He, that's his specialty, and, and he's, he fishes all the creeks around there. He knows he stays up with the fish. And uh, so if you've never done it, give him a call. You'll have a, you'll have a great day. And another good day of fishing in North Carolina. Absolutely. For Joe Albee, I'm John Moore. Thanks for joining us today on the Carolina Outdoor Journal. Make sure to visit our website for more information. Grady White boats are known for uncompromising quality through exceptional attention to detail. On every model, from 18 to 45 feet, we incorporate exclusive features and quality components that you won't find on any other boat brands. Our exclusive CV2 hull design is ranked highest in every third-party survey done in the marine industry, so every day on the water will be a great day, no matter the conditions. Ask any Grady White owner and they'll tell you, get the Grady.